Hi, everybody. Okay, five minutes now on the term civilization. Keep in mind, these are very compressed lectures. So the idea is that you take a look at these, but don't just use them the, you, the way you would use a regular classroom lecture. You want to go back and read the material that's on the PowerPoint slides, consider some of the things uh, that I've asked you to consider here in the lecture. So here we go. Civilization defined in two different ways. One in a way that's very simple and straightforward and we can all kind of agree on and we can say, look, this is what civilization is. This is the term Riley says is useful and it's civilization meaning a complex society dependent upon agriculture with all of those characteristics uh, in that first definition. That definition, by the way, is Wikipedia, is from Wikipedia, but it's a generally agreed upon uh, definition and, and worth uh, exploring further. On the other hand, of course, civilization, to say somebody is civilized is a very complex and, and problematic term. And just to give you an example of that, George Bush described uh, what, what he calls the war on terror as a not a clash between civilizations or a class of civilizations, but a struggle for civilization. So what does he mean when he says that? Well, let's take a look at a couple of images here. And hopefully these images will get us to begin to think critically about that term civilization. On the right here are two images, one of the atom bomb dropped in uh, Japan, the two atom bombs dropped in Japan uh, during World War II, and another showing you the commemoration of the Day of Ashura, which is a, a day of uh, uh, commemorating a, a martyrdom in uh, Shia Islam. Um, which of these two images would you describe as, as, as civilized? By the same token here on the left, are some uh, images from a 1903 book on American history and life and co contrast the Minuteman here on the top, this statue, with what he described, uh, the author described as an uncivilized savage, this Native American fellow here. Again, which of these two is civilized and why do you think one is civilized and the other is not civilized? Okay. To me, what's most interesting is the paradoxes of civilization. First is the one um, that maybe some of you are familiar with, this idea that in defense of civilization, people have committed the most horrific, horrible, uncivilized, barbaric acts. Okay? So how do you make sense of that? How can you possibly be defending civilization by doing something so uncivilized? The other thing that I find fascinating is that we talk about civilization and we show images of civilization as these grand uh, buildings, great art, and so forth. Um, it's a, a sort of built environment, the cities uh, that we excavate and say, ah, oh, look, here are the civilized, uh, here are civilizations. But in fact, civilization is ultimately not the built environment, not anything physical, but a state of mind. That's why we can all talk about ourselves as being part of Western civilization. It's, it's essentially colonized our minds or, or made us think of ourselves in a larger context and in a way that really has nothing to do with the physical or built environment as much as it has to do with how we feel about how we should behave, about how other people should behave, about how our society should be organized. And then finally, the final paradox here is uh, a very modern one and has to do with um, climate change, global warming. And that is that our unproblematic view of civilization, this one that Riley defends as useful and the one that I described at the beginning here, is actually very problematic and very difficult in itself. And that's because civilization exists in contradistinction to nature. We think of Neolithic people, hunter-gatherers, as existing in a state of nature. And we give up that state of nature to join a society, to become part of a civilized society or a civilization. Okay? But if civilization and nature are incompatible, and historically uh, this has uh, proven true in, in places where uh, civilization uh, increases population density, increases demand on local resources, and the result is that there is an absolute collapse of civilization and indeed the complete disappearance of uh, groups of people. That's true locally in history, but it's potentially true uh, globally in the future. Okay? It's potentially true that civilization, uh, uh, all of the things that we describe as civilization, will ultimately uh, destroy the very foundation of uh, our civilization of our world. Okay. Finally, I've given you a thinking question there and I'm going to cut this off at five minutes. Bye-bye.